We are back, Peanut Gallery. I'm going to leave the floor to you. Well, I mean, I just learned about this too, but um, so not only is Kurt Angle going to make an appearance and McFoley making an appearance, but JBL just made an appearance in GCW. What is going on with GCW? Like, they are... No, uh, uh, JBL made an appearance at MLW. Oh, okay. Anyways, um, anyways, uh, so what's going on with these brands? Like, we talked about this a couple of years ago where, um, you know, we were trying to find alternatives, you know, alternative wrestling promotions. And, mm-hmm. and of course, uh, WWE wasn't doing their rebound, the resurgence yet. But, I mean, MLW and GCW both are kind of making waves well, very, at the moment. They're, like, they're they totally, are, because here's the thing. They, Jay, are, they are signing a lot of these big, even if it's just for one night, it's like Kurt Angle probably doesn't come all that cheap. <laughs> I wonder if there is a working relationship with WWE because Kurt Angle, if I'm not mistaken, is under a Legends contract with Mm -hmm. the E. I know JBL is. Yeah, JBL's making appearances everywhere. Yeah. I mean, mean, he he, he showed up in TNA. Right. He showed up in TNA. Again, he showed up in TNA at Victory Road. He showed up in Mexico. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't go over to Japan and make an appearance there. I would be surprised if he's riding around the fucking corner doing <laughs> I would that. Be surprised, um, but these little indie promotions are somehow, even with the resurgence with WWE, are doing well for themselves. Well, yeah, because wrestling just in general is except on a resurgence, if, you know, except, except for AEW because yeah, AEW is booking <laughs> horribly, even though AEW is the second biggest promotion. Right. Well, I mean, I think it's the help with WWE. I think Look, WWE is doing a lot of I mean look, look at look at Bloodsport yeah. that is a GCW sponsored show yep. even though uh it's Josh Barnett who's running the program you had the Creed brothers you mm-hmm. had Shayna Baszler I think there was somebody else but I, I think you guys get the point uh I find there's just a lot of these other people showing up on other brands and don't be surprised if we start seeing some MLW mm-hmm. GCW these people maybe with some names showing up on NXT. Right. I could I could see that. We, yeah, absolutely. We we have enough TNA people there. Might as well <laughs> might as well run the gambit and have everybody show up. <laughs> right. Why don't what about Tripla A having Luchador show up on NXT? That'd be cool. Right. Um I but yeah, you're right. I think a lot of this is WWE related, just yep. opening up to other promotions. It's it's just a, it's just the daunting of a new era and it's great. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um oh, so God, I feel sucks. sorry for Seth, man. She's also she was also involved in the major storyline too, which was very surprising. Uh, I don't Steph Delander needs neck surgery. I mean, it well, it just seems like it came out of nowhere. It did. It came out of I did I had I don't think even TNA had a plan because obviously she was gonna be very much involved in this drama between PCO and um Matt Cardona. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So this this really did come out of nowhere. I hope it's not genital, uh, uh, generative or anything like that. Right. Like it'll continue to do that or genetic. I mm-hmm. hope it's something that they can correct. And yeah, it's I hope corrected. it's something that's in just in, in injury related. You know, something that is like, oh, this is not like an ongoing issue. Right. But neck surgery isn't something to laugh at because, yeah. of course, uh, Brian Danielson also needs neck surgery by the end of the year. So, uh, um, and yet he's still fucking wrestling. Right, he is incredible. He's, taped up like a mummy at least uh, at least tna care about their fucking talent and say you know if you need to you know get neck surgery and there is no timetable for her return obviously yeah because so. neck next depending on how bad this surgery is mm-hmm. it could be we've seen people come back in six months we've seen people retire but and see, that would suck for what i liked about this though is that steph the lander wanted to come out and address it with the fans yep. directly i'm and, glad about that too mm-hmm. it really shows that she cares and she's obviously upset i'm upset about it i saw that like oh dude i'm upset too um so this is kenta not kenta um don't look at me you're the one who has had these i understand adam i can't remember his name because it's japanese i mean there's these wonderful things and i have them it's a kuniyaki kobayashi yes uh he was a og person for the dojo Mm -hmm. and if i'm not mistaken the first iwgp junior heavyweight champion yeah and then he also had a very famous long-standing rivalry with jushin thunder liger right so i mean that's unfortunate i can't remember i think he was like 60 something he was 68 years old oh so close yes and then Motor City Machine Guns, I think it's all but confirmed at this point in time that they have signed with WWE. And they are going to NXT, yes. which I, P 
people have their reserve uh, reservations regarding Motor City machine guns going directly to NXT. They're 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 past their prime. I mean, they're not they're not the young whippersnappers that we've all come to know and love. That's true. This is not two, this is not two thousand and and twelve Motor City machine right. guns. And I'm thinking that they're going to NXT because they wanted to. Go I to think NXT. so. It was a choice. I think for them to go to NXT. They're, they're, they're not forced the, to go anywhere that they don't want to. Right. It's, it's the Motor City they're, machine They're guns. still going to get paid main roster money. Oh, yeah. Why but wouldn't you? They'll show up mainly at NXT. And then that also gives them the opportunity to work in TNA, which is their... Exactly. Um, and I think that they are also there to really... Well, no, and now just keep in mind, too, and, well, and NXT is going into CW, so I mm-hmm. wonder if they're going to be waiting for them to debut there. That is the that is the theory, is that they are going to be waiting for that CW debut for yep. them to debut. They made the smart choice. Yep, they, they made did. the smart choice. They did. They made the very smart choice. Batista. So Batista had a big um, interview, I think, with, uh, I can't remember the guy's Chris name. Chris Van Fleet. Yep. Uh, and uh, he talked about obviously because he has this movie coming out or with Drew McIntyre. Out with Drew McIntyre, I can't remember. I think it was um, a Killer's Game or something like that. Yeah. I'm not a movie person. Yeah, it's, it is a Killer's Game. But he said something very interesting about why he retired the way that he did, and it was because he retired as a heel, more of a heel persona rather than a big baby face persona. Right. And he said that he wanted to go on his own terms too, so he wasn't injured or anything, but. Uh, people are going to be comparing the way that Batista went with the way that John Cena is going to go. And Batista literally said, I couldn't do what Cena did. I mm-hmm. wanted to do just one more big farewell. Batista has nothing left to prove. He doesn't He doesn't have to do a retirement tour. Obviously, Batista and John Cena have a lot of parallels with terms of their wrestling careers. They are friends, and I respect Batista immensely for how he got to this point, but... I agree with him. If he was ready to be done, I think he should go out on his terms, yep. and he did. And now he's doing movies. He lost an, an like uncomfortable amount of weight. He's like at two fourteen or yeah, something he like is, that. He looks very skinny. Um, but that was an interesting thing that I got from that interview. Yep. Um, Bret Hart. I mean, just in general, both of the Hart. I, I loved the. Uh, I loved the. Um, I was such on a good train of thought. Bret Hart. Uh, so do I like know? the interactions that he had with Gunther and with Sami Zayn. Yes. And Natalia also came back on the same show. Yes. That was really cool because she's from Calgary, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. And so is, I think he is also. Yep. I, either he's from Calgary or somewhere just outside of Calgary. But he spent a lot of... He, he cut his boots in Calgary. Let's put I guess, it that way. Uh, I guess he wasn't feeling well. Yes, he wasn't. Yeah. That's there, what there, I heard his, as well. his entire segment was actually up in the air because apparently he was sick. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of why he was sort of more mundane than he usually is. Mm-hmm. I mean, Bret Hart has not been the person of enormous amount of charisma, but he was definitely not yeah, on his not, He did not get over because he had good mic skills. Yep. <laughs> he had he had fantastic matches, but he was definitely a little more on the, He was a little more muted. Yeah, but just because he wasn't feeling well mm-hmm. and he made some botches, some mistakes, and it's like, well, the guy's probably so fog-headed. I know when I'm feeling bad, I don't want to be on camera. Mm-hmm. Peanut Gallery and I don't get sick a whole lot, but if one of us is, the show's going to be up in the air. Right. I'm not going to try to get through a show when I'm dying. Right. <laughs> this is not going to happen. <laughs> like, I have, I have a fairly like good work mm-hmm. ethic for my age, and uh, even if I'm sick, I'm like, I am doing nothing. And... So what do you think about the new logo? I talked about it, and it is good and sort of weird at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's good because I I even talked about this. It's clear. You can use it in different ways, Mm -hmm. and it's instantly recognizable. And because I am a designer on my – as my regular job, I've been doing it for a long time. Yep. But – I see how people can say it looks like it's saying smack sound. Yes. Because it's like combined, but the D and the top part of the S are literally the same shape. Yeah. Even though they're a different color. Um, I'm not the most gigantic fan of gradients in a logo. I'm more of a minimalist logo guy. But um, I, I think it 
does work. It's, it's, it'll grow on yeah, us. Yeah, it'll it'll grow on you. Uh, the theme song is what m- people were more pissed off about because it's some little poppy whatever yeah. song. It's like that's what's popular right now. Yeah, that's people. Just, yeah, people just need to get over that. That's just what's popular, and and they're. You're not the primary demographic exactly. of WWE. WWE really caters more towards families. Yeah. That, that is really what it is. Now, the person song is ass, but oh, yeah. that's that's just personally speaking. I'm, I'm more of a rock guy myself. I understand where people are coming mm-hmm. from. But at the same time, I know that what's popular. And yeah. what's popular right now is poppy shit. Right. And it ebbs and flows. It'll, yep. it'll go away yep. in a while. It happens around every decade or yep, so. It does. So people need to chill out. And they, they honestly, it honestly did need a refresh. They've been on Fox in 2019. It well, just, they, they went, I mean, it was about time. I'm sure, was, I'm sure Raw's going to do the same exact thing. Yeah, when Raw, they Raw's probably going to do the same exact thing. But yes, NXT's so, probably going to do the same exact thing. They're mm-hmm. going to do a nice little refresh with everything. Yep. And that's just how it's going to be. So that's the first of many. But when, so I think that's it. But when we come yep. back, we're actually going to talk a little bit more about some of the numbers behind these shows uh, and what and why it makes the most sense for them to be on those networks. Exactly.